Seeking Seeker in stunning Scotland. This week, Tim's stalking in Inverness Show, and I'm off roaring stags on Exmoor with people who make a noise like this. <coughs> Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Scotland is not a one-trick pony when it comes to its deer. Of course, red deer are the main event, offering magical stalking in some of the most breathtaking scenery in the world. But hot on its heels are Seeker. Even with a heavy cull programme to help protect forestry, the non-native Seeker are spreading and offering great stalking opportunities. This evening, Tim is being looked after by Lackey Smith of Highland Sporting. Now, one of the things people do talk about um, is the, the cross hybridisation of the, the red and the seeker. Um, you've got a view on that, you know? <laughs> you know. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't believe it's, it's as much a concern as some people believe. I think in some areas it might be. Mm -hmm. I think if, there's, you know, if you've got two sparse populations, then, then there might be more of an opportunity. I think if there's enough of their own species, I don't think it happens as much as people imagine. Okay. Now, we look at the train here. You're, you're saying to us this is real kind of classic seeker Well, country, in, the, in, this, in this part of, of Scotland, yeah, where there's a bit of, you know, low highlands, if you like, where mm -hmm. you've got the lower hills and, and you've got some, some maybe birch trees and stuff like that, sort of natural stuff. They seem to do pretty well in this and I quite like it. It's quite often as well, you know, they've probably populated these areas because there wasn't that many red in them anyway. And it's become, you know, it's become a, a place where they could thrive. I think it's just a wee bit of opportunism on their part. Yeah, yeah. We're in Inverness, close to Loch Ness, if you get a chance to see it, and looking for a seeker stag to add to the red he took in Sutherland. The ground is not as challenging as the West Highland coast, but cover is a problem. First, we spot from the road. Your eagle eyes are just picked up on a, looks like we've got a one or two beasts over there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, how far away are they then? At the, at the moment, a long, long, long way. way yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll actually, okay, we've done, done the important bit here. We've actually located where they are. And they seem fairly settled, so that's fine. And so we got the wind in our face at the moment, haven't we? So Actually, can, can you believe that? It's, thr it's thrashing the, the, the head out, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's not that heavy. Hey! Was in the way out. <laughs> Where's your lid go? <laughs> Surviving the drive-by, we have a couple of stags to chase. The wind isn't brilliant for us, and we now have a second stag to contend with. We try and get around onto them, but to no avail. As we let things settle down, Lackey tells Tim more about the Scottish Seeker. So the Seeker, Lackey, are a very, very different type of animal, the way they behave. They behave very different from the rays. Yeah. Very, very differently indeed. They're much more solitary, you know, they, they live, you know, in singles and pairs and all the rest. And this sort of ground, you know, reds would tend to, if you disturb the they quickly go in one bunch yes. and move. Wouldn't guarantee that with Seeker, they might, but they were more likely to go their separate little ways. So they're all individuals as opposed yeah. to a pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, you, know, you will see them in herds at times, but you know they don't hold hinds the way that red stags do. I mean, yes, sometimes you'll see them with a group of hinds, if you disturb them, they'll run out together. But you know the stag will stay there if for something in the season fine. If not, he just goes. And, and you know I would say that's probably why they're such a, a sort of high caffeine rate the seeker, you know, it's that, that sort of method of mating, you know, they're just, they're just moving around the whole time. 
could well be doing this this uh, clump of, of, of scrub in front of us, yeah. and they're likely to feed out. And you know, the wind's still perfect for us, but I don't want to keep going higher here just now because we'll just run out of light. Okay. Okay. Right. So we'll just take our time. We'll just cut back a little bit and come out in this next level. You can keep your Serengetis and your Santorinis. With a beautiful Scotch sunset to accompany us, Tim moves towards a group grazing just over the brow. There's a spiker in there, and Lackey warns they're going to graze towards us. He is spot on and we get a good look at the lead hind before she wins us. Well, I was quite surprised is how small they are. I mean, yeah. they're, they're bigger than the road, yeah? Yeah, but, but the thing is, that because it's been in, in winter coat, they're, they're virtually black. Anything that's very dark always gives the impression of being large. If you see a stag, when it's been, a, a hill stag, has been rolling about in, in a peat hag, he stands up and he goes, oh, look at that huge black one. And he's not any bigger than the rest, just because Looks he's very nice. definite. You can see them. You see how well their their coats are just now mm. blending in. You've really got to look to see them. Mm. But if he, if he's if he's black, he stands out like a sore thumb. We thought we have a lion tomorrow morning, but no, um, not. <laughs> a lion if you want. I'll so uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens weather ways. At the moment, it's, it's very mild. Uh, if it was a bit sharper in the morning, we might try another place. We'll just literally see what happens when we get up in the morning and then go from there. Okay, okay. brilliant. What a great evening, but there's a lovely Black Isle morning to wake up for too. This time the animals are few and far between, and the Seeker in the Mist prove elusive. Tim's hope of a red and Seeker stag double hasn't worked out as we'd hoped, but the Scottish experience, especially the mighty first stalk on the reds, has made its mark. I've really enjoyed my time in Scotland, other than the midges. The midges are an issue during the summer and in, in the autumn and when the wind's not blowing and we've had a very little wind over the last two or three days but it has so much to offer the highlands just stunning and you come down to the lowlands down towards Loch Ness and it offers you that challenge we have the hunting but also we have the outdoor challenge the, the walking the trekking I think it's got everything and I'm really looking forward to coming back in December on the hinds thank you Tim no Loch Ness monsters for you then and talking of scaly creatures, it is the creature from the Black Lagoon himself, David, on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. It looks as if there could be at least two new game fairs to replace the CLA game fair next year, and possibly both on the same weekend. Where Stanton of Blaze Publishing, which produces magazines such as Sporting Rifle and Gun Trade News, plans a game fair at Stoney Park in Warwickshire. Meanwhile, Midland Game Fair organiser Countryman Fairs says it's definitely organising a new national countryside event to replace the CLA Game Fair. We've learnt the BBC Countryfile Fair at Blenheim Palace is informally asking gun makers to exhibit, but the BBC's track record on shooting means that the gun trade is reluctant. And there's still talk of a third national game fair at a South of England venue. Keep watching Field Sports Channel News for more. Prince William's plea to stop elephant and rhino poaching has received widespread coverage in China. He made his speech about the illegal ivory and rhino horn trade as China's president arrived for a tour of the UK. He admitted that previous generations of the royal family had little concern about acquiring ivory. The problem today is that many Chinese do not accept that rhino horn cannot cure cancer. Do you want to try fox hunting? The Countryside Alliance's annual Newcomers Week gives those new to the sport a chance to try hunting for the first time. It runs from the 17th to the 24th of October. Events range from jumping practice sessions to help mounted followers get their eye in after a summer break to meet specifically tailored to those trying hunting for the first time. There's also barbecues and tours of hunt kennels. Visit the Countryside Alliance website for more. The only direct result of the Cecil the Lion hunting case is the airlines banning the movement of trophies. And now they're getting sued for it. Hunting clubs and a man who paid $350,000 for a license to hunt a black rhino in Namibia have sued Delta Airlines, saying its ban on transporting some big game hunting trophies 
hurts conservation efforts and violates its global obligations. They point out that tourist hunting revenue is the backbone of anti-poaching in Africa, so Delta's ban puts wildlife at risk. Iceland's ptarmigan season opens on the 23rd of October. Icelanders can shoot up to 54,000 birds over four weekends, up by 6,000 birds on last season's quota. Ptarmigans are a traditional and seasonal Icelandic dish, typically served around Christmas time. This film is from a series about working English setters in Iceland. And finally, do you have £5 million to spend on a hunting lodge? The Deer Tracks Ranch in northern Michigan, USA, is on the market and offers 1,500 acres of virgin forest land inside a nine-mile fence that's filled with wildlife. Owned by a man who built log cabins for a living, it comes with luxury high seats, three miles of trout streams, on-site game larder, a main lodge that sleeps 12, and another lodge that sleeps 14. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hey Charlie, Mark Yaler here, deep in the garden of England, shooting geese. Hello Charlie, out for a wee walk this evening. Got myself a nice wee pair. Hello Charlie, Ray here. Up out early on the squirrels this morning. Got a caddy bag already. Keep the good work, love the show. Oh, sorry, gotta go up, God visitors. Hello Charlie, Darcy here from Australia, Victoria, just out hunting some rabbits with my 22. Cheers. Hello Charlie, Deep Jones here from Pest Control and Deer Management UK. I had a call late to do a bit of fox control tonight and uh, 20 minutes in, job done mate. Hello Charlie. This week we're at Bergham near Battle. Just finished a lovely drive. Hello Charlie, nearly finished here in Kyrgyzstan. Had a wonderful time, few tummy problems but nothing to worry about. But if you are going to go to the loo, you might as well choose a loo with a view. That's it, please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those, and I say it every time, but please do keep sending them in. Now from bowel movements to bolving on Exmoor. <coughs> About four hours ago, there was nothing here at all, so we're very lucky, very lucky indeed. What's the World Bowling Championships? So it started 12 years ago on Exmoor, and it was basically a bet between two guys in the Rock House Inn in Dolverton. One bet the other that he could get the stag to answer him back, so off they went. And it's kind of gone from there. So Phil Ferris, who was one of the guys involved, unfortunately passed away. So this event was established really to raise money for the Devon Air Ambulance and in memory of Phil. Try your luck bowling at the stag, he's going well. Richard is master of ceremonies of this magnificent event that promises to stop you getting stuck in a rut. Who judges it? We've got five local guys that judge it, guys that know their deer and are obsessed with their deer. So they listen to everyone, they listen to the stag that's coming back at them and they deem what's a good authentic bowl. Here's a competitor. Well, I got taught by a very close friend of mine and um, basically we come out when the rut starts and just go around looking for where the deer are and then just go out and try calling. And I've been lucky to have a few call back. Um, had quite a few close encounters as well, but no, it's, it's just the, the adrenaline, I think, just hearing a stag roar. This is Daniel's first time. Some here are old hands. So you've done this before? I have, yes, a few times, yeah. Um, I've come second on a couple of occasions, so hopefully tonight might be my night. But um, there's a few people here who I've not seen before, so they might be dark horses. <laughs> I think it's it's the it's the depth. It's a low it's a low tone and like a uh, guttural sound. If you can get that the more guttural, the better. I think. So you want huge sinuses? I think so. Yeah, or, or deep deep from the from the bottom of the chest. I've heard uh, I've heard the noise being described as something cross between a chainsaw and a cow mooing. So if you can get that, then you're doing all right. <laughs> the judges have a clear idea about what they want. To me, a bowling champion is basically the most authentic person to sound like a stag. Are you, are you looking at them or are you looking at the stag for the reaction? What, what I'm, no, I'm not looking for any reaction from the deer whatsoever. It's basically the most authentic 
person. So I think Sam Stan Bogart. Well, let the championships begin. Final argument saver. Who made the best noise take place at the crowded Rock House Inn in Dulverton? I'd say it's a record year, to be honest. I think we, you know, we're close to 300 people up there tonight. So, um, 51 people entered, including the juniors. We've never had that amount enter before. Yeah, so, what do you reckon? Do you reckon? No, too high. Too high. Uh, my voice was too high. What about you? Uh, no, I, I think I got all the body body control actions wrong, completely wrong. It's all in the body, isn't Yeah, it? I think so, yeah. It's gone right down from below and then up, in not And the winner is Vaughan. <laughs> so what did the judges like about him? Um, he was more guttural in the way he evolved. Uh, um, like, there's a lot of people that thought it could just go and shake the stage, and they weren't, it wasn't going from basically, it was just a shake. Vaughan had it. He really had that sort of, well, that sound. A clearly emotional winnie there, ending our coverage of the 2015 Championship. Find out more about the competition in future years on the Exmoor National Park website. Or from a crowded country lane to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Adam and Dave from Dale Muse One are back. They send me their new Goshawk film with hawking action on high ground. Nice one by Basque Films. Pink footed geese at the Wire Loon Sanctuary shows the start of the wildfowling in Walker Bay in the northwest of England with lovely pictures of geese. Here's an interesting film. Sky News goes out with South Africa's new rapid response anti poaching unit to witness the efforts being made to stem the slaughter of rhinos in the Kruger National Park. Off to the USA, where Keith Warren takes seven-year-old Davis Smith from Arkansas on his first hunt ever at Hog Wild Adventures in Texas. Also hunting hogs in the USA is Pork Choppers Aviation. It is taking a group out in helicopters to shoot feral hogs. The 2015-2016 season starts strongly according to Jerome R who brings out this film of the opening of his boar season. Another JR, this one JR Hunting, is after Mercedes Ibex in Spain. Beautiful views of animals in the mountains and on farmland. And finally viewer Matty Lloyd reminds me about this one from 2000. It's a pro-hunting protest song. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to us on YouTube or go to our website, click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our show. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>